I mean, look at that. That is spectacular. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a good one. Thanks. Alrighty. So I'm currently in Appalachia, specifically in West Virginia, picking up some necessities at the general store. And I got here yesterday. Well, technically, I think I got here the day before yesterday in Kentucky, but I got to this spot specifically in West Virginia yesterday. And from the few times that I've visited here and the last couple days, I've grown kind of an affinity for Appalachia and the people here and the food and everything like that. I feel like it's a very underappreciated part of this country because there's so much natural beauty surrounding this entire area. Beautiful scenery, rivers, mountains, valleys, and all this cool stuff to go explore along with historical buildings and architecture and places that I just think look super cool and they look like they've been untouched for 20, 30, 40 years. And it's cool to finally get out here after being on the West Coast for so long and, uh, and be able to explore and check some things out. So I think today we're gonna camp here in Appalachia in West Virginia and maybe try to cook some delicious Appalachian food. But first, I gotta do a few things, starting with filling up my water tank, which hopefully at this campground that I just pulled into, there is a water fill up spot. Look at that, non-potable water in that spigot. I love when they're clearly labeled. Non-potable water, that's for cleaning out your poop and other things from your uh, nasty tank. And then far away from that is a potable water or potable water road. I've already had that argument on this channel. Don't really care how you say it, I like potable. The reason I need to get water is because last night when I was, uh back here. I was doing my dishes and he might not be able to tell because there's a bunch of dishes in the sink. But the reason I stopped is because as you can tell, I don't have water pressure because I ran out of water. I wasn't able to finish doing the dishes and uh, that's why we got to fill up today. And I've definitely filled up at some sketchy places before in the van at random gas stations that just had a spigot on the side um, in places where I probably shouldn't have filled up. So it's always nice when it's clearly labeled as drinking water so I don't have to worry about it. But I do have filters on the inside of the van to help me with that. I got a three-stage filter built into my water system. And then also on the end of this thing, which is my water fill up hose, I have another filter that filters out all of the bigger stuff. And if you want a surefire way to kind of find drinking water, if you're on the road and you're living in your van full time, the best place to find it is at campsites because typically it's free and typically it is drinkable. Boom, there we go. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but she's filling up. It really does feel good to almost be home. For those of you guys who are following along, I think the last time I posted, I was in Arizona and I'm currently in West Virginia. So I've made a lot of progress since my last video, driving across the country to make it back home to see my girlfriend and go to a wedding that we got invited to. And I've been driving like an absolute madman, six, seven, eight hour days, sometimes 10 hour days for the last five or six days to get from there to here. And don't worry, along the way, I stopped at a bunch of places. That video is coming out after this one, kind of showing a bunch of cool places along the way from Arizona back here to Maryland. But don't worry, since I drove all the way here, you guys know that I have a house in San Diego, which means I have to drive all the way back from here to San Diego. So when I do that drive, there'll be a ton of videos kind of documenting the whole trip. So very excited to do that. And then in the meantime, while I'm waiting for my truck camper to be built, which if you guys didn't know, uh, I'm building out a new truck camper on a Japanese mini truck. And the shelf for that is being assembled in New Jersey. So I'm gonna hang out in Maryland, wait for that to be done, pick it up, and then drive that across the country with me. So in the meantime, I'm going to explore the East Coast because even though I am from here, I haven't done that enough on this channel. So excited to do that, but we might be here for a while waiting for this because the flow is not very strong and my tank was completely empty. I was gonna make sure to drain this out. All filled up, ready to go. Now, we just have to go get the ingredients for the Appalachian dinner we're cooking tonight. So this area that I'm currently in, in Fayetteville, West Virginia, is right near New River Gorge National Park and Preserve, and we're actually about to go over the New River Gorge Bridge right now, which is this crazy high bridge over the gorge and the river. And I'm not sure you're gonna be able to appreciate the scale of this bridge from up here. It's either the largest or the longest arch bridge in the entirety of the Western Hemisphere. And tonight, hopefully, we're gonna be able to find a spot directly below this bridge down in the valley to camp tonight. But before we head down there, we gotta get some gorge trees so we can cook some food. You already know where we're at. At this point, 
Wally World's got to sponsor me. I come here so much. If they don't, I might have to switch up my grocer. But for dinner tonight, we are doing a two-part dinner with a little Appalachian appetizer and then an entree. So, the dishes that I'm making tonight are a kilt salad or a killed salad or a wilted salad. I've seen it mentioned a couple different ways online. Um, I think the coolest way is a killed salad. And I think the reason that they're called a killed salad or a kilt salad or a wilted salad is because essentially it's leafy greens topped with bacon and then the dressing is actually the bacon grease. So when you pour it on and it's all hot, it wilts or kills the lettuce. But the other dish that I'm making is a classic that I probably haven't had in 15 years. And that is chicken and dumplings or chicken and biscuits, depending on who you ask. So, get all this stuff put away, and then hopefully go find a campsite nearby and cook some dinner because I'm starving. Let's go find somewhere to camp. So I'm hoping there's a spot somewhere down here below the bridge, but I guess we will see. Beautiful road down here though. All right, so we made it all the way down. We're on the mini bridge below the New River Gorge Bridge. Crossing over to the other side where hopefully there's a spot up here. But that bridge is massive. That is crazy. All right, we're gonna try down in here. All right, so we pulled in. I think this is where we're gonna camp tonight. Directly below the bridge. So I think there's a river right through there, but I mean, look at that. That is spectacular. I don't understand how someone builds something like that. Like just imagine building that arch because you know that's what they had to build first and just hanging up that high above this gorge. So crazy. Also, I don't know if there's trains that come by here, but would probably be very loud if they do. So with a spot like this, there is nothing explicitly prohibiting camping overnight. I don't necessarily think it's promoted, but I'm walking over here to check this sign just in case. Well, actually, this sign says that camping is allowed throughout the park for up to 14 days. I think over here, there's also a uh, little stream. I can hear it, or a river. Yeah, you can kind of see it through those bushes, but not really. Don't want to step too far in there. Get into that poison ivy. Now that we found our spot, it is time to start cooking dinner and the delicious Appalachian food that we're going to be making. So let's get started on that. So I'm hoping the bugs aren't going to be too bad tonight. Keep this door open while I cook that nice view of the bridge out the front door. So I'm gonna wait on the wilted salad because that's gonna cook up pretty quick. And I'm gonna get started on cooking the chicken and dumplings first. And I bought some chicken tenders, but I'm gonna use these chicken thighs because they're going bad in a day and I forgot I had them. So let's get to cooking. So I really like the idea of, since I'm in the van and I'm cooking and I'm traveling all the time, oh, I can't forget. Gotta wear my one of a kind custom apron with wipe spots on it. If you wanna know what that's all about, you can watch my last video. But what I was saying is since I travel in the van and I cook all the time and I'm always on the go, I figured I kinda of wanna start cooking more local foods from the area that I'm in when I'm there because I think it'd be fun to try out new things, see what each different area of the country eats and then see how good of a version of it I can make. But essentially with these chicken thighs, I'm just gonna take them and I'm gonna cut them up into roughly one inch cubes just so they cook a little bit faster. Next, I'm gonna take a pot. Now that we have water pressure, Fill that up with water and then get that on the stove and boiling. So while we wait for this to boil, I'm gonna get started prepping the other ingredients and this is a sick shot. The bridge in the background, that's pretty cool. And these first two are just a matter of preference because the recipe that I'm following for these chicken and biscuits actually doesn't call for these two ingredients, but I think it'd be pretty good and I want some veggies in mine. So I'm just gonna chop up some celery and some carrots to throw them in there with my chicken and gravy. I'm working on my cutting technique. First, I want to be able to do it slow and steady, and then once we get it slow and steady, we can kind of pick up the speed and start chopping things faster. Ideally without cutting my thumb off like I did that one time. There we go. That should be enough carrots and celery for one dish. Now that our water is boiling, take our chicken. Come on. Oh, get that in there. And then, this isn't in the recipe, but in the recipe that I'm following, they use chicken thighs with bones in them, which will impart a little bit more of a chicken flavor into the water than just plain chicken will. So I'm gonna be adding this better than bouillon. Basically chicken flavoring, I'm gonna add it to the water. Now that that's done, we get to wait 
45 minutes for this chicken to cook. Actually, almost forgot. Throw in our carrots and our celery. I was gonna saute these, but I just don't feel like getting another pan dirty, so they're just going straight in the water with the chicken. I also dumped some of the water out, but there we go. Now we wait 45 minutes. Alrighty, it's been about 45 minutes. This chicken should be nice and tender and ready to be pulled apart. Also, if you want to skip this step entirely for this recipe, you can also just buy a rotisserie chicken from the store or a pre-cooked chicken. Makes it a little easier. There we go. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of cream of chicken to give it a little bit creamier of a consistency. And now we'll wait for that broth to get up and boiling again. I am going to make the dumplings. So although I didn't cheat on the chicken, I did cheat on the dumplings and we're just going to make Bisquick biscuits instead of making it from scratch because it's essentially the same process, just with a few different ingredients. And also, before we do that actually, I'm going to get the bacon on because I'll need both the grease and the bacon bits from this bacon. So the only other ingredient we need for dumplings is milk. So we need one cup of Bisquick. And then one third of a cup of milk. And then we're just going to knead this into a dough. I also forgot to add one tablespoon of vegetable oil. There we go. That's our biscuit dough. Got a mosquito in here, so I had to close the door. And now that our water is boiling, add our chicken back in. And then one scoop at a time, basically one little spoonful, add the biscuit dough directly into the water. Some people prefer to kind of like roll it out into strips and then cut it evenly. I've read online that it kind of doesn't matter. Just get them in there, get them cooking. It's more about aesthetic at that point. There we go. We've got all our little biscuit pieces in there. Our chicken, everything's boiling. Now we'll let that cook for roughly 10 to 15 minutes. I think this bacon's ready for a flip. All right, bacon, done. Ready to come out. We want to save this bacon grease because that is what's going to be our salad dressing, apparently. So I'm going to keep the heat on that and then roughly chop these up to go on top of the salad as a topping. And then the last thing we got to do while we wait for the biscuits to finish cooking is prep and then chop our salad. Roughly chop some lettuce and then some green onions. And that's all we need for our salad. So I'm going to go ahead and cover our dumplings, wait another five minutes, and then we're eating. Alrighty. I think those are about done. They look delicious. Go ahead and scoop some of that out. And then for the salad, going in with the lettuce, green onions, bacon bits, and then this freshly made bacon grease. And you can kind of see the salad wilting or being killed or whatever you want to call it. That is my Appalachian style dinner out here under New River Gorge in Southern West Virginia. Let's eat. So keeping with the theme and rating these dishes that I cooked, I'm actually very excited to try this one. I've got very high hopes. Some pepper, a little bit of salt. Chicken and biscuits first. Cheers. Okay, try again. Cheers. That's actually so good. It tastes almost exactly like chicken noodle soup, but with bread in it. It is really good, because typically when I eat my chicken noodle soup, I use about an entire loaf of bread dipping it in there anyway, so. This just makes it a little bit easier. And overall, I think I give this 7.4 out of 10. Definitely would make it again. Now, let's try out this bacon grease covered lettuce, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of making a salad, but it's probably going to be good. Honestly, it is pretty good, but I feel like it does need something else. I don't really know what, but tomatoes or some sort of cheese in there or something might make it a little better. I think for that one overall, I'd give it a 5.2 out of 10. Don't necessarily know if I'd make that again, but it's not bad. If there's anyone in the comments from Appalachia, let me know how you think I did. I think that's it for this one though. Definitely going to be going back for seconds, finish that pot and then finish this episode of Suits, go to bed, wake up and head towards back home. So as always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel and I will catch you guys next time.